G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to my kitchen. Now, a lot of you have asked for my Rocky Road recipe. So, let's get on to it today. And I know it's not a pouring video. Well, it kind of is. I'm going to pour ingredients. So, let's get started. Now, um, when I make something like this, a sweet treat for Christmas, I like to make a big batch because I only want to make it once and I want to share it with my friends and family and give it away as gifts. So I always make a big batch of, of things like this. That way I can just make it once and move on to the next thing. Right, what we need, I'm going to go through the ingredients real quick with you and then I'll tell you about how much I'm using when I add it to my, my bowls. This is a, a smaller bowl and I'm going to put my melted or put my chocolate in there and I'm going to melt it. This is the big bowl and all the ingredients go into that. And then over here, oops, I've got my big tray and I've just lined it with foil and that's what we're gonna pour the Rocky Road into. So get everything ready first. Um, now, first thing we need, I like to have a mixture of milk chocolate and dark chocolate. I just think all milk chocolate is too rich all dark chocolate is too bitter, so I sort of do two parts milk to one part dark. So that's that. Um, and then we have some marshmallows, jumbo size, the pink and white. I like the Pascal brand personally, just I like the flavour of them better. Uh, we need some roasted salted peanuts. And we need some desiccated coconut. And then there's some red jubes. Well, I'm not sure what you might call them over in the States or the UK, but they're just soft red jelly type lollies, sweets. So that. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is put the chocolate in the bowl and we are going to melt that down. So with the um, milk chocolate, I have got 880 grams, which is about 30 ounces. Okay. So just pop all those in there first. Actually, I should probably move a few things out of the way for now and get to the chocolate instead. All right, here we go. Put that there. Now, sometimes it's cheaper. Sometimes they have these ones on sale when you get like two blocks for $5 or something like that. Um, sometimes the bigger blocks are on sale. Um, so sometimes I just get the big ones and sometimes I get the little ones. Just depends on whatever's on sale. <laughs> it's a lot of chocolate. So I would advise to buy it when it's on sale. That's when I get it. If I know, you know that I'm going to be making it coming up to Christmas, that's when I'll go and buy it on sale. All right, so I'm just going to put all this in here. So you do need a relatively big bowl to melt your chocolate. And I actually, I know a lot of people use like double boilers and things like that. I personally just like using my microwave. You do have to just go slow though. There's no point putting on for two minutes on high and walking away from it. You know, you'll come back and your chocolate will be burnt and you don't want that obviously. So I just sort of do it in 30 second hits on high in my microwave and I find that that's plenty. All right, so let me just break up the rest of this chocolate and I'll put the dark chocolate in there as well. I'll just mix the two together and uh, then I'll come back to you. I'll just do that, break it up. All right, so I'm going to finish that and I'll come back to you. There we go. Look at that. Huge big bowl of chocolate. Now I know it's a bit overflowing in bits, but um, as the chocolate melts, it will all sort of compact down. Now the other thing um, don't use cooking chocolate, compound chocolate. You know, if you're sitting down after a lovely dinner um, and you're watching a favourite movie or something or you're giving it as gifts, are you going to sit there and eat some compound chocolate? I don't think so. Use whatever sort of chocolate you would eat generally. All right? Don't use that yucky compound stuff. It's not worth it. You're spending all this money uh, just to create something that's not going to taste good. So use good quality eating chocolate. Right, I'm going to go and pop this in the microwave and um, I'll be right back. Right, so that's in the microwave. I've set it for one minute um, and then I'll give it a stir and then I'll do 30 second increments after that. So the next thing we need to do is 
add all our ingredients. Now, with the marshmallows, I personally like to just keep them whole. I don't, I don't reason, I don't see a reason like to cut them in half. I like the big chunks in it because you know you want a really rocky, rocky road. So just slice that off, throw them in. There we go. Look at that. Same with the peanuts. This is a really easy recipe, you know. All you're doing is melting chocolate. That's all the baking there is. It's not a difficult thing to do. You could do it with your kids, with your grandkids. In go the peanuts. They salted peanuts. Oh, there's the microwave. The salted peanuts. So it gives a little bit of salt to the, the dish. Let me grab that chocolate out of the microwave. Go. It's starting to sort of melt a little bit on the sides there. Look at that. So it has dropped down. And I need a spoon. So just give it a bit of a mix. So now this is where you want to just go slow after the initial one minute. So just 30 second blasts with the microwave. Let's give it a good stir. Because the middle tends to be hotter than the outside and it tends to burn in the middle. So make sure that you give it a good stir. Look at that. Yum, yum, yum. I forgot to get a little plate out to put my spoon on. I'll just hold it. Let go. All right, let's pop that back in for another 30 seconds. Got my microwave right here. All right, that can continue. Now, um, the coconut. Um, so, I should tell you, actually, I did 880 grams of milk chocolate. Are you writing this down? Go grab a pen. Put it on pause, go grab a pen and paper. 880 grams of milk chocolate. That's 30 ounces. And we have half that amount of the dark chocolate. 440 grams of dark chocolate. That is 15 ounces, okay? Then the marshmallows, there was two big bags. I use the, the 520 grams. So there's about 1,000 grams, a kilo of marshmallows, um, which is about 33 ounces, okay? The peanuts, I used a 375 gram bag. It's about 12 ounces. The red jubes, they're 190 grams each. Put you on focus 190 grams so shoe fly um, so I've just rounded it up there's three packets of that so I just rounded it up to 600 grams that's 12 ounces the other red jubes that are really nice like you could put um, what's it called Turkish delight in here as well if you didn't want to use these or any soft jube I wouldn't recommend using a hard one the natural in Australia, the natural confectionery company make them, and they've got like this little liquid centre. They're really nice too. But I'm going to do it with these today. Let me just grab that chocolate again. So while your chocolate's melting, you can get on with other things. That's right, almost done. The chocolate gets to a stage where. Um, it will continue to sort of melt the chocolate in its residual heat. So you don't have to necessarily think that it has to be totally, totally smooth. If there's a few little lumps, I wouldn't put it back in the microwave. Just let it continue to, to melt in its residual heat. You're better off doing that than overheating it and then risk burning it. Because I have done that before. I've, I've burnt my chocolate and I'm not, oh, so disappointed. All that money wasted. So there's a few, see there's a few little lumps there like that. I will put it in just for another 30 because it's only had one and a half minutes. So I'll put it in for another 30 seconds and I'll be right back. Right, so we've gone through all the um, measurements and everything. Now with the desiccated coconut, uh, you need one and a half cups of that. So pretty much one and a half cups is one and a half cups wherever you live. There's, there's a slight difference, but nothing that's going to be too dramatic. It's very easier if you just do it over the bowl in case you spill. It's 
scoop a little bit more, just level it like that. That's the one cup. And then half a cup. Just try and get a little bit more in to level it. There we go. And there's our coconut. Let me grab that chocolate out of the microwave. I've heard it go beep. Now that should, that should be done. Let's have two minutes. It's nice and warm. Two minutes usually does it, with my microwave anyway. Look at that. <gasps> Looks so good. You want to dive in. This is where I love dipping strawberries or get a marshmallow and dip it in there. Yum. Mix it up really well. Make sure that your dark and your milk chocolate's mixed up really well. So there's no more lumps in that. I think it's really good. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm just going to set that aside just for a, a minute while I do the jubes. Now the jubes are the only thing that really takes a little bit of time because I like to cut them in half. I think it just makes it a bit easier when you're slicing your Rocky Road slice if they are cut in half. And I'm just going to pour them out here. It's a clean bench. So what I do is just with a pair of scissors, I'm just going to actually cut each one in half. So it does take a bit of time. Don't cut your fingers. <laughs> If you want to leave them whole, you can do that. But like I said, it just makes it a little bit easier to slice through when you've got a cold um, slice, because I like to keep it in the fridge. But um, they're cut in half. So I will just do all this. And then once I've cut them all in half, I'll come back and I'll pour the chocolate in, okay? And that's it. Easy peasy. That's all done. Now there's lots of variations you can do with this. I'm just using my big serving spoon, give it a stir. Lots of variations you could do with this. Um, like I said before, you could put um, Turkish Delight in instead of the raspberry lollies. Um, I have previously done hazelnuts. Uh, I don't think I put the jubes in, I just kind of did hazelnuts and I put some Ferrero Rochers in that I had left over from Christmas. Uh, the other thing you could possibly do, and I haven't actually tried this, but I was thinking about it and it sounded really yummy. What about um, a bag of already popped popcorn with peanuts? And you wouldn't do the marshmallows and the jubes, but just popcorn, peanuts and um, chocolate. And I'd probably put the coconut in, or oh, maybe not. What do you think? Would you put coconut in it? But that would be a beautiful, like a, um, you know, what do they call the, um, just the chocolate and the peanuts together? like a scorched peanut chocolate bar. That would be really yummy. Actually, I should try that. Chocolate, peanuts, popcorn. I'll just go to the store and buy a bag of already popped popcorn, lightly salted. I think that would be so delicious. And you'd get the, you know, you'd get the soft sort of effect as you get with the marshmallows, but it would be popcorn and then you've still got the crunch of the nuts. So that, yeah, that would be really good. All right, now let's pour the chocolate in. Here we go. Now pour carefully. You don't want to pour it over the edge of your bowl. <laughs> make sure that it's make sure that you're using a bowl that's going to actually accommodate all of this because it's a lot of ingredients. Make sure that you get it right up to the edge there. You don't want it to overflow. So good. Smells delicious. Now I'm just going to scrape Scrape that bowl clean with my little spatula. Get all the chocolate off. I'm going to waste any. All right. Here we go. Scrape all that yumminess out. I still need to do for Christmas, I still need to do the, um, what's it called? Nougat with the, the nuts pistachios and almonds and things so I still need to do that one it's got that edible rice paper on the top and the bottom so I still need to do that oh I've got to tell you I made the most delicious shortbread cookies yesterday just clean my hands <laughs> I'll tell you about it while I'm wiping my hands um I did because you know how you can do oh look at that there's a couple of stray pieces of 
lolly. <clears throat> you know you can do normal shortbread, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that you sort of maybe roll out or put into a log and then you slice it. Um, I do the one that you roll out and then you get the little shapes and you cut it and it's a bit of an effort. But <clears throat> my favourite, move that out of the way, my favourite favourite are these whipped shortbreads that I made yesterday. And I've made whipped shortbread a lot of times, but I've never put jam in the middle before. And I thought, I wonder what would happen if I just, after I've piped them, just put a little bit of jam in, pipe a little bit of jam in. Oh my God, you guys, they are just divine. They are so good. They're so tender. I'm going to eat this one. So if anyone wants to see the, how I did those, let me know. Do you know how shortbread is really melt in the mouth? They're just so delicious. All right, I'm going to eat that, and now I'm going to mix this. Back to the big spoon. Now, I'm going to be a bit careful here. I'm going to mix really carefully. I do have a bigger bowl than this, but it's really big. It's like, out here. It's massive, and I didn't think I needed that one. This is the one I usually use. But um, you don't have to make a big batch like this. You can halve the ingredients I gave you. You could make a third of a batch if you prefer, if there's not many people in your family. You don't have to make a huge batch like this. But if you guys have been watching my like my fudge recipe, my caramel fudge recipe, and also my peanut brittle recipe, uh, you'll know that I don't like using half a bottle of this and a three-quarter of a packet of that. I just use... I make my recipe so that I can use like a whole packet of peanuts <laughs> and, you know, two big bags of marshmallows. I don't want to go, okay, well, I need one and three quarter bags of marshmallows, you know. So that's, that's how I do my recipes. But by all means, halve it, third it, quarter it, whatever you want to do, whatever floats your boat. And we just need to keep mixing. It's pretty heavy. It is heavy. <laughs> really get in there and lift it up I just go like you can see I just go from the outside in and then once everything's covered and you can't see any more of that white coconut the coconuts all gone brown and chocolate covered then um, then I know I can stop so a few more it's looking delicious so what other variations of Rocky Road would you guys eat or would you make? Apart from the Turkish Delight one, the hazelnut one, maybe the one with peanuts, uh, sorry, um, popcorn. What else do you guys do with your Rocky Road? Are there any other interesting ideas that you guys have done? Love to hear them. Stray peanut to get back in there. All right, I think we're pretty much done there. Pretty much done. Okay, so now the only thing we need to do now that that's done. Oh, look, I've lost a couple of peanuts. Get in there. Get in there. All right, here's the tray. Now, because it's a big tray, I've lined it in two pieces, that way and that way. Otherwise, one piece, I need to, it sort of comes up to the sides about that. And um, I wanted the whole thing to be covered because once it's set, you can just pick the whole thing up out of the foil, move it onto your wooden cutting board, and then it's really easy to slice. You don't have to struggle about, you know, getting it out of the pan that might be stuck into. Oh, it's really heavy. This is where I need you guys' help. I need one of you to jump down, hold the bowl for me while I scoop. Look at that. Yum. Let's get all that yumminess out. I'm gonna, not going to leave anything behind. Let me go back to my little scraper here and get all that out. It's just melted chocolate, really, that's left there. A few stray peanuts, but mainly just melted chocolate and some coconut. And then I just like to spread this mixture out. In different areas and I don't like putting it like a big blob just on top of the other big blob of chocolate because then you'd have this big mouthful of chocolate with nothing in it so I just sort of spread it around so there's no big 
blobs of chocolate. All right, that'll do. We're done there. Let me put that there. And I need to wipe my hands again. It's a bit of a messy project, isn't it? All right, so now all we need to do, last thing, we just need to spread this out. Um, if you don't want to use a big tray like this, maybe you don't have room in your fridge, your refrigerator, um, you could do two smaller trays. Or you may want to split your chocolate in half and do two bowls and do, you know, popcorn in one, marshmallows in the other. So you could do, yeah, two different flavours of Rocky Road at the same time with your big batch of melted chocolate that you've got. And then you could do two separate trays. It's just a matter here of spreading it. Try and get that down to the bottom so that you don't have any big gaps. And it's not that easy to spread because of the marshmallows, but I like them like that. I mean, if you don't want them to be like as rocky as that, um, feel free to cut your marshmallows in half, but I like them like that. I like having a big chunk of marshmallow. And it looks really pretty too. So just take, some, take a little bit of time, spread it out. Go away, fly. I can't escape the flies. You know, there's flies in my art studio. There's flies in my kitchen. <laughs> I think they come in through the doggy door when the dogs come in. And, you know, it's Queensland, Australia. It's, it's hot outside. The flies are around. It's, it just is what it is. So just spread them out kind of evenly. And then you can just sort of drop it like that just to make sure that you're getting the chocolate through to the bottom and that is about it you guys it's not difficult to do not difficult at all now i'm missing that area there hasn't got any marshmallows in it so let's just roll you over there I'm a bit of a bit pedantic when i come to spreading my marshmallows out i want to make sure that every piece has got a good amount of marshmallow so anyway, that's all you do. Right, uh, now what we need to do is, I don't cover it because, you know, it'll just, the plastic will just stick to the chocolate. I just pick this up now and put it in the fridge. I'll have to go into my fridge and make, make some room. Um, just make sure that you don't have anything in your fridge like fish or meat or something that's uncovered that, you know, the smell's going to transfer into your chocolate. So... Make sure that if you have got anything like that in your fridge, it's well sealed. Otherwise, the smell transfers and it's a bit icky. All right. Um, I'm going to get myself cleaned up. I'm going to put this in the fridge. And um, I'm going to give it a couple of hours to solidify. And then we'll cut it, hey? Once it's nice and cold and set, we'll come back and slice it up so it looks like on the inside. And you won't be able to have any. I will. I'll share. I'll tell you what it tastes like. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in a couple of hours. Hey, I'm back. Looks as if it's set. It's been in the fridge a couple of hours. So let's get it out. Let's loosen that foil all the way around there. And then it should just lift out. Like so, and I just got it on my wooden chopping board there. I might actually take it out of the foil just so that when you're slicing, you're not slicing through the foil, or maybe get some foil stuck to the back of your pieces. So, again, just lift it up. Foil off. Make sure your hands are nice and clean. I just washed mine before I started. <laughs> there we go. I have to come around the back of the tripod and do this last bit. There we go. Look at that. It's a lot of Rocky Road, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. Okay. Now, I usually get my husband to do this because it can be. You know, when it's cold, it's a bit harder, but use a nice big 
put you on autofocus. Nice big strong knife. I'm going to turn this a little bit so that I can get it towards me. Otherwise I won't be able to push down. Actually, I might put you on the other side of me. Hang on. Hang on one sec. That didn't work either. Just have to excuse me if my hand's in the way. I'm right-handed. I have to be on this side. All right, so it's just a matter of pushing down. That's not going to work, is it? My arm's going to be in the way. Oh, gosh. Here we go. How about this? Excuse my bruise. I don't know what I've done there, but I've bruised it. Just have to push down. Yeah, like I said, I normally get my husband to do this bit for me. Just sort of rock the knife. Because it's pretty thick. I mean, you could make it thinner if you wanted to, but it's pretty thick and it's cold, so it's a little bit difficult to slice. Oh, all right, here we go. Let's have a look. Look at that. Wow. Yummy. How good does that look? So I just slice it into rows like this. Let me do one more. Just rock that knife a little bit. And of course I'm on a funny angle because I'm trying not to get my whole body in frame. So normally I'd be standing right over the top of it. All right, so there we go. So once that's done, then we get our little slices that we've just cut. And then I kind of like to do them about that size. About that size. Gotta eat that bit. <laughs> Yum. Right, I'll stand this way and I can actually see what I'm doing. This is tricky. I'm not used to doing cooking videos. I do the acrylic pouring and the resin. I just stand there and then the camera's ahead of me. And I don't have to worry about what's in frame and what's out of frame. Alrighty. Oh. oh, that was a good little red jube. Alright, so then just it's my nice little red Christmas plate. Just plate it up. You've got a choice of sizes there, you know, got some bigger bits and some smaller bits so that your guests can choose if they want a big piece or a little piece. I'm going to just put it like that actually so that you can see the inside. Look at that. Well, I'm going to go cut all of this up now um, and I'm going to store it in a plastic Tupperware container, pop it back in the fridge. And it'll keep for a very long time. You know, it's just chocolate. Chocolate can stay in the fridge for a very long time. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed that video. Looks really yummy, doesn't it? All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. Take care. See you later. Bye for now.